There we go. So it's fired one. And again, every 10 seconds they'll fire. So here we go. It's going to loop around. It's coming back towards us here. So let's uh, drop some flares. Drop flares. Look at that. It actually went for the flares. What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic and we're back once again with another awesome addition to the Khan Gaming Arsenal and a while ago before the explosives update was even a thing, we had looked at homing missiles. Now I don't have it spawned here because that homing missile no longer works, it used the remote control glitch which is no longer a thing in Scrap Mechanic, it's been patched out. But then after that, when the explosives were added, I decided to go back and revisit it and make this missile here, which you can see is rather bulky, but it uses the Intelligentsi mod and it steers, and uh, I think it's got a time delay. It should track us pretty good. Yeah, so there it goes, and it should, uh, let's just, you know, let's just get it away from everything else so we don't accidentally blow anything up. So you can see it uses thrusters, turns itself around, and, I mean, it's pretty good. It's pretty accurate on target. It leaves a rain of destruction. Absolutely awesome. Sometimes it leaves excess parts. But what if I told you we could make the exact same homing missile in a much, much smaller package? We could have a homing missile that's, in fact, just this tiny little super simple package here. Look at this. Anybody can make this. This tiny little missile, it's got an actual paddle switch on the bottom. And same thing as before, we can actually launch it straight up. And you can see it will go up. And after a short period of time, it'll actually loop around and come back and track the closest player and uh, apparently go straight through the terrain. Hold on, there we go, perfect. But of course, we can try that again with another one here and uh, we'll just see if this one maybe won't hit the terrain that time. They of course move very, very quickly and sometimes they'll go straight through the terrain. They're very, very good at hitting vehicles though. There we go, that one direct hit. So you can see really, really awesome stuff and really great that we can get the entire functionality of that large homing missile into this tiny little package here. And so of course, a few of you have probably figured out exactly how it works. It's a very, very simple thing. And in the Intelligentia mod, there's not only the player indicators which steer you in the direction of the player, but there's this one block here, which is the player magnet. And in the Bouncing Betty video, we actually used that to make a sort of rubberized grenade that would bounce across the terrain and still sort of track the players. And after doing that, I thought, you know, I wonder if we can actually take this and put it on the front of a missile. And it works completely in this configuration as long as you keep the wings. If you don't have the wings, it'll just sort of tumble out of control and won't really work. But if you have a thruster on the bottom, the wings on the sides, and the player magnet on the top, you can actually make extremely compact homing missiles. Now, I know a lot of you are going to say, well, Khan, there's even smaller explosives. You could use explosives from the uh, Explosive Warheads mod, I guess it's called, the one that has, like, you know, the missile tips. And I tried that, but I found a lot of the time they didn't even explode on contact. They just went straight through the object because they were moving so fast. So, really simply, this just has a timer on the top. When you hit the switch, it activates the thruster as well as activates the timer. When the timer is up, it starts activating the player magnet to then pull the rocket towards the closest player. So really just awesome stuff. Of course, just like all the other trackers in the Intelligentia mod, if you don't want the missile to track you, you can actually just press E on top of that sort of player magnet block on the tip of the missile. And now if we fire it, you can see even when the timer's up, I don't think there's any other players or player indicators on the map. So it should just keep flying straight up, which it, it seems to be doing, and it'll probably explode on the skybox very shortly here. We should see that, um, I think it, actually, I think it hit the skybox and didn't explode. Oh, oh, there it goes, perfect. So you can see, just a really awesome compact design, and of course, I decided to make a giant missile launching system that would automatically shoot people and target anyone close by to it. So of course, we'll put this on a lift, just so you can really see how it works, and really simply, we've got eight missiles here, all homing missiles attached to a single strip of cardboard, and when we take this off the lift, you can see the number seven there. It lets you know how many are left in the chamber plus the one in the live rounds. And then we've got this lovely sealed in concrete carcass just to make sure if any like stray spuds are coming by or whatever, you won't accidentally set up all these missiles really simply. But we press that button, it'll load them in really nicely and then it'll flip up that sidewall and boom, no problem. And when this is empty, we can actually reload it with another clip if we want. But really simply, we've got a couple switches here. The uh, gray is if you want to access that hatch, really don't need it. The seven indicates the number of leftover homing missiles, so you've got one ready to go and then seven additional ones. And then the orange and brown are kind of if you want to automatically cycle. So we could press six and it'll actually slide it to the next position. It'll automatically bring that ramp down. But really, we should leave it at seven because we do have seven. And then, of course, if we press the green, that'll actually start the sequence. And this timer here indicates how much time you have before the sequence is active. So 
This particular missile turret uses this single player indicator here to determine when to fire, and this is a thousand block range. So if a player comes within a thousand block range, it will actually launch, and of course, the missiles are all in here. So if you wanted to set this up to, you know, not shoot you and only shoot your friends, you'd have to actually go and set yourself as the exception for each of the missiles when you bring the whole clip out. And then, of course, you'd have to set yourself as the exception here so the turret wouldn't start shooting when you come within range. But we'll actually leave it like this. We'll leave this at 10 seconds. And really simply, when it does track a player, it'll launch a rocket and then it'll reload and it'll fire one missile every 10 seconds. I didn't want it to spam fire them just in case, you know, the player is flying by. You want it to only fire one and you can see there it launches off. It'll go up. It'll start tracking and then it'll turn around and it'll come get us here. And uh, yeah, pretty. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, no, perfect. Kind of bounce off the wall. And we're still within the 1,000 block range. So, of course, it's going to fire more. Let's just start running away a little bit. Hopefully, we can get in this car. All right. Oh, oh, missed. Good, good. It's still firing. It's still firing more of them. You can see they kind of launch at an angle. That's, of course, because the cardboard is attached on the one side. But they have enough space that they don't ever really collide. And it doesn't really matter. Oh, boy. That one went through the ground. That's not good. Oh, hello. Hello. How are you doing today? Um... I'm doing fine. How how are you? Oh, oh boy, that was oh that was not good. Okay, well, so much for that card. This isn't really supposed to be a ground to ground weapon. I was more picturing this as a ground to air weapon. So you can see it's still shooting minus four. So it's clearly thinks that we're still within range and it doesn't have any ammo. So really simply, we can put it on the lift. We can turn this off. We can crank this back up to seven. Of course, we could just spawn another one if we wanted to. So here we've got the clip. Really simply, I've got the clip spawned, and I'll upload the clip to the workshop as well as the homing missile. And then we just take the yellow block here and weld it to the yellow caution block inside there. Problem solved, things loaded, make sure the number's cranked up at 7, and boom, we're loaded up again and good to go. I did intend more for this not to be a ground-to-ground -ground weapon. I mean, it's pretty good. The homing missiles are okay. They fly up, they come down. Of course, there's still issues fighting gravity and, you know, having to, the further away you go, the more gravity it's got to fight when it goes more horizontal distance. But I was really intending this more to be a ground-to-air kind of platform. I was thinking kind of like a SAM turret, but really just sort of like a mobile air defense. You could put this down somewhere, and of course, if someone flies a plane overhead, you can shoot them down. So, of course, I decided to make a really simple plane. And I know with all the homing missiles videos we've done before, a lot of you guys kept saying over and over again, Con, you have to make a plane with flares. So this plane is equipped with six player indicators on it, as well as you, the player in the seat. And those player indicators are actually all triggered by a spud gun underneath here and a line of cardboard. So as we fly, we can shoot six times to drop six flares as decoys for our eight rockets. So hopefully we could dodge enough of these rockets and actually survive the whole thing. But it's a really simple plane. It doesn't have any rudder control, but uh, we've got roll control and then W and S. We've got the sort of pitch control. And then we can press the one switch to move forward with the thrusters and the two switch will deploy one of the flares or player indicators, however you want to call it. So we're just going to set this up here just so we can get a clear run, hopefully, and take off. You do have to kind of roll the wings a little bit to take off with this plane. It's a little bit weird, but once it's flying, it's super stable. So we're going to change the missile turret because obviously it's going to be targeting us, and we're going to just increase this to 60 seconds total. Uh, it's good to go. It is still targeting us, and we hit that green button. Now we have 60 seconds until it becomes active and live. I figure, you know, it's good to have that just in case, you know, you want to do a demo like this and not get shot right away. So let's just get up into the air here. Should be able to just uh, hit a bump. Perfect. And, oh, hit a rock. Can we just go up? There we go. That's great. And we'll just get a fair amount of distance away. I know a 1,000 blocks is kind of hard to judge, but I think we're within a 1,000 here. It kind of blends in nicely. I mean, obviously, when the trees despawn, it doesn't really. But if you hit that by a cliff or a rock, you know, it'll fly straight up. It'll be hard to spot if you're flying overhead in a plane. So let's just do a flyby here and see if it uh, triggers. And we've got eight rockets to dodge. Oh, that triggered. Okay, let's get out of here. Let's let it come to us. And now, of course, here's the one thing. When you drop a flare, if it doesn't hit the flare... Oh, boy, that was the wrong button. Oh, goodness. Okay, okay, where is it? Drop a flare. Oh, no, see, it didn't go for the flare. It's still... Drop another one. No, it's still... Oh, we're still too close. Oh, can we... Can you leave me alone, please? Oh, boy. So obviously we dropped two player indicators, but they dropped so fast out the back, the missile was too close to us, and actually it didn't go for the player indicators, it went for us instead. Now, obviously, if the player indicator is still sitting on the ground, 
uh, there is a chance that a rocket will actually fire towards the ground and try and take out that player indicator. And that's kind of why I wanted to go a little bit away from the turret, because if we actually drop a player indicator too close to the turret, it'll just keep going off and trying to shoot until, of course, it shoots right at the ground and blows up that player indicator, which will happen. But we've got a new plane here. Uh, let's see if I got the right controls this time. All right, it, it shouldn't have shot all its ammo. There goes another one there. All right, so that's that one's rocket number two. Let's just uh, get away from it. All right, here we go. Dropping flare. See, that time, it, it's... Oh, goodness. Dropping another flare. There we go. See, that one, it, it, it thought about it for a second. No, drop flare. Drop, drop flare. Drop. No, go, go for the... Uh, you're not going for the flare. You're not going for the flare. Yeah, hello. I've got a buddy. This is my buddy. This is my buddy, Steve. Oh, you can see there there is a player indicator actually close by. The rockets from the SAM turret are now firing. And uh, they're trying to take out the ground there. You can see, yeah, you can see it, it's firing. There's a player indicator right on the ground there. Can you, can you, Steve, 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 the, Steve. See, the only thing with the rockets being this small is there's no proximity detection on it to sort of sense when there is something close by. And uh, as a result, we end up with this kind of issue. Can we... Oh, yeah, no, perfect. All right, so I've actually loaded into a new world here just because we've pretty much littered that entire old world with player indicators. So the missiles are going to start tracking all sorts of random objects around the ground. Generally speaking, flares are not a great idea, but we're going to load into a new world. We're going to activate this one again on... Uh, we'll do this one on a 30-second timer. I think that will be enough. But this time with the plane, what I think we're going to do is instead of having only one flare drop off one side, we're going to double up all the flares. So we're going to fill in these gaps with more of them and we'll just uh we'll paint them all black not that it really matters and then we'll put these ones here as well and now when each cardboard piece in the middle breaks you can see the cardboard pieces are all on bearings so each one is technically a different body when it breaks it'll drop two at a time and hopefully that'll be enough to defuse the rockets pretty much every rocket just flew right past the flare and came towards us because we were still the closest player target so we've got this still set thousand block range 30 seconds here we go we got to get up in the sky so there's the turret there in the middle of the field hopefully we can uh, keep some distance again we'll try and drop the flares away from the turret we'll try and you know go within range let the missiles start chasing us and then lead it away now as you saw previously sometimes the missiles just come right up next to the vehicle and just kind of push against it if we made it a little bit bigger we could put a proximity sensor on the turret and have like a detonation device maybe like an explosive from the mod pack or just a spud gun or something but overall, it's still an awesome design and definitely a much more portable homing missile system. And of course, if you do use like the modded explosives, the really small single block ones, uh, it'll glitch through stuff a lot more, but it'll be even smaller of a rocket. You just use one of those with the player magnet and problem solved. So I think we'll go within range here. I think, yeah, there we go. So it's fired one. And again, every 10 seconds they'll fire. So here we go. It's going to loop around. It's coming back towards us here. So let's uh, drop some flares. Drop flares. Look at that. It actually went for the flares. <gasps> yes. That's so good. There it went. It went to the ground. That was awesome. So I guess we just needed two flares per thing. Of course, I'll upload the missile turret and the missile clip to the workshop. I'll upload this plane as well with the flares. All right. So that's one we dodged. Let's see if we can dodge six more. Seven more. Oh, God. This is not going to be... Flares. 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 <gasps> no, 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 no. Flares. Flares again. Flares. Oh, no. It did. It's going for one of them. It is. Oh, we dropped an excess of amount. Okay, it's we got oh two more flying. Oh, it's just constantly firing now. Oh, there's definitely a player indicator too close. See, this is the problem with player indicators, and this is why it would be nice, uh, you know, not to use flares. Obviously, these are really close rockets. That one's trying to come for me now. You know what? I can dodge this all day. Look, drop all those flares. What are you gonna do? Look at that. That is so cool. Two of them just going for all the flares, but. Of course, let me know what you think of this build in the comments down below. I think it's really, really awesome. I mean, I'd love to have way more, you know, rockets in the in the turret, of course. All right, so once again, I've spawned into a new world, and I figure what we'll do for this last sort of experiment is we'll increase the thrust on the plane by two notches on each of these small thrusters. I don't know how, how much that's going to do. And we'll delete all the flares off the back. I don't want any of these flares, none of the player indicators or anything like that. Just to make sure there's nothing here. So there we go. No flares on the back. And we'll see how many rockets we can actually get onto the back of the plane uh, before it becomes a problem. So we'll just line that up there. We'll set this to maybe, you know, 10, 10 seconds. That should be fine. You know what? We'll get out of range of 10 seconds. Here we go. And uh, yeah, this is, this is much faster now. So I think we will... 
outrun the rockets. Oh my goodness, this is this is like a, a supersonic jet. Oh boy. Uh, okay. Okay. I think I think we can get like all the rockets on us here. So let's just keep doing loops around it and see if these rockets are fast enough to. Oh man, it is fast though. Here it comes. I mean, it it is it. Holy cow! It's actually fast enough. Are you serious? It's gaining. It's no, it's not gaining, is it? It's, it's, oh my god, it's gaining. Oh, this Deke, Deke, look at that. It can't even, oh my goodness, that's two. Okay, that's two. All right, this is, oh, this is tense. Oh my goodness, don't hit each other. Oh, that's three, 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 three. Okay, where's the, okay, we need to pick up some speed. Four, okay, that's four of them. Oh my, this is the scariest thing. Oh, two of them, three of them hit each other. Yes, cl collateral damage, perfect. We got three more on us. I think, I think three hit. Okay, yeah, no, dodge all them. Oh, this is the best. This is the most intense mini game I think I've ever played. They're so accurate to- Oh, oh, that would miss the tail. like, oh, yeah, you can't do it. What are you gonna do? They're all gonna hit each other soon. I think this is the last four, so I think- I think the other four killed each other. Oh, there's two more gone. Hit each other again, casualties. Oh, there's one more. It got hit by the other one. Is that it? Did we survive? That was the coolest thing I have ever done in Scrap Mechanic. All right, let's let's do this again, but this time we'll drop the engine by one, so we're just not as fast, and see if we can survive the missile onslaught. Oh, one of them exploded in the chamber. Now that happens sometimes. So I don't think we'll be able to outrun them as much. Oh, it's already it's already ranging us. That's that's great. That's fantastic. Okay, that's that's fine. It is kind of cool how they all detonate on each other. Though. That's really oh boy. Hello. Uh, we'll just go this way. They turn so fast. Look at that. It's it's literally like a flying explosive crate. That's that's all it looks like. You can't even. Oh, that was close. Can we? Can we? Oh my god. Okay, let's go into the canyon. Oh, dear lord. Oh my good. Yeah. Oh no, that was. A, oh. This is intense. Of course, let me know what you guys think of these builds in the comments down below. Let me know of any other cool ideas you guys have. I always love reading ideas. And of course, uh, the player magnets are just such a great, great piece of equipment. But let me know what you think. I think these are definitely the coolest little improved missiles we could have made. I mean, they're so good. They're so accurate. They're so fast. And they're just a lot of fun to try and dodge. Can you not hit the tail? That would be great. But I'm going to keep... Oh, dog. Dog. Man, that's so every time. Oh. Spawn another plane. This is honestly one of the most fun things I think I've done in Scrap Mechanic a while. Just trying to dodge these rockets. But of course, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And while you're at it, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll see y'all next time. Dropping flares.